Joining us now, another member of that select committee, Congressman Lynn Westmoreland, Chairman of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee of the Full House Intelligence Committee. Lynn, it is so good to have you back on America's Forum. Well, thank you, J.D. Thanks for having me. Now, Lynn, when you and I last talked and you graciously guested here on America's Forum, you were basically supplementing the effort of all the different committees putting together a lot of work for Speaker John Boehner and what I guess we could have called an informal or ad hoc committee. Of course, shortly thereafter, the decision was made to form the select committee. You've got, what, eight months? Most people say really about five months to get things done. Some of the work that you were doing, does that plug right in now to uh, help the select committee get its official uh, duties underway? Well, I think it does, J.D., and what we found, and, you know, the Speaker has been um, uh, postponing doing this select committee for some time, and when we put together the ad hoc committee about eight weeks ago, of course, with the Speaker's permission, I guess the last two meetings we had, we went back to the Speaker and explained to him the difficulty that we were having, and J.D., I know you know what I'm talking about, is getting into another committee's lane and trying to, once we identified where the gaps were and identified who we thought we might need to bring back in to clarify some of the testimony, we would have to get on a schedule for a certain committee and... Um, it, it, it just put us too far down the road, and it kept delaying what we were trying to do. And if you take that and you put it on top of the email that came out uh, from Ben Rhodes and the fact that what the uh, one that Judicial Watch got and the one that we had gotten, the Oversight Committee had gotten, were basically... Uh, uh, I don't want to say two different emails, but they were certainly uh, presented differently. So now you're in a situation where all the competing and conflicting jurisdictions theoretically have been set aside for the select committee to be chaired by your colleague, Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina. Now, the big story for Friday and I guess over the weekend Still a question about the role of the minority party in the House, the Democratic Party. Do you expect the Democrats to totally boycott this select committee? Well, J.D., I don't know. I mean, if you look at the uh, last select committee that we had uh, in the House, it was one that uh, then-Speaker Pelosi put together on climate change, and it was nine Democrats to six Republicans. And while we knew that that was going to be a partisan uh, kangaroo court, we still participated because we wanted to make sure that we could do everything that we could to make sure that the truth got out. And so I think with the Speaker and five on this select committee, it's been more than fair. And what the minority is asking for is not fair, and it will just stall and not promote this committee to get to the truth. So we are certainly hoping uh, that they will participate because, as Chairman Gowdy has said so many times, we want the truth. And, you know, you, the facts are the facts, and that's what we're going to find out, and then we're going to present those. And uh, I think that's what these four families that had loved ones murdered and the rest of the Americans expect. And that is for their Congress, uh, the People's House, uh, to come up with something that they can um, see as a good, honest work product. You mentioned the name of Nancy Pelosi, now former speaker, courtesy of the Republican majority in the House. She's the Democrat leader. The other day, she called this a political stunt. Uh, others, uh, uh, part of the uh, who are part of the Democratic Caucus, call it a winch hunt. Uh, call it um, uh, all sorts of different names. Kangaroo Court, I believe, comes to mind. It appears the leadership uh, of the Democratic Party in the House is sending a strong signal that that they're disinclined to get involved, and that may be an understatement. 
But in terms of the resolution that was passed by the House, this is what I understand, Lynn, that uh, the, the Speaker, in consultation with the minority leader, will name committee members. Now, if the minority leader chooses not to be involved, I would imagine the Speaker, under this resolution, has the right to, to go to some Democrats and invite them to become part of the committee. And I would imagine he would go to the seven Democrats who voted, or five of those seven Democrats who voted in favor of this select committee. Do you envision that happening? Um, it, I, I don't know, and, and I don't know what the Speaker's intentions are, and I certainly don't know what uh, um, Congresswoman Pelosi's intentions are. There were seven uh, that voted with us. They're all in very tough, uh, competitive districts uh, for the November election. And, you know, it's hard to say if their leadership does not want them to serve. Even if Speaker Boehner appointed them, they could decline, I guess, uh, to serve. And, J.D., what this Speaker, uh, what uh, Ms. Pelosi is trying to do is put rules and limitations on what the majority can do. They want the ability to nix uh, somebody that we want to subpoena or, or uh, uh, you know, delay the process. And I just do not believe that the speaker is going to give in to that. And so, therefore, they may use that as an excuse not to participate. Congressman John Bachman here. I just wanted to ask you what you felt like would be the minimum amount of information that needs to come out of this inquest to, to, to I guess, make the skeptics of the process change their mind. What, what piece of information that we don't know at this time do you feel like needs to come out in order to make everybody say, hey, this really was a worthwhile process? Well, John, I think there has been enough that has already come out in the fact that this Ben Rose to email had more redactions in it in what was sent to Congress than what was sent to Judicial Watch. And in the fact that, to me, the very fact that this stuff was subpoenaed in late September, October of 2012, and just now we are getting some of that information. Now, if I was on the Democratic side, the minority side, I would want to know what in the world is taking so long to get this information out. And so I think that within itself is a great question. Well, Lynn, you're pointing out something that, that is important, and it is that at other times, for example, I can recall uh, during my days on the Ways and Means Committee, uh, the, the Commerce Committee in the House tried to step in on a question of taxation. And Charlie Rangel, who uh, was disinclined to agree with just about anything that then Ways and Means Chairman Bill Thomas of California would propose, uh, Congressman Rangel said, hey, listen, when it comes to questions of jurisdiction, we will stand with you united. And Lynn, you're mentioning the process here and the constitutional question of separation of powers and the constitutional role of the legislative branch, the Congress, in oversight. So you do have this significant problem if, if in response to subpoenas, the administration has been withholding, has been delaying information for a matter not of weeks, not of months, but of years. This is a very, very serious, serious situation. Have any Democrats come to you informally, far from the roar of the grease bait, the smell of the crowd, and we don't have to name names, but have you heard from any on the other side of the aisle their concerns about this, uh, this usurpation or just ignoring, I guess we should say, a congressional oversight. J.D., we have not heard a word from, uh, I have not heard a word, and I can't speak for Chairman Gowdy, but you're exactly right. I mean, the role of Congress is to be a check and balance, uh, you know, with the administration. And so what we're doing is actual oversight, and as you mentioned, the difference uh, in the two committees' jurisdiction, 
we have just, um, you know, this thing goes from the DOD, uh, you know, the military to the State Department to the intelligence community. And so there is overlap there, and that's what we were hoping we could overcome with this uh, ad hoc committee uh, because we had members from each one of those different committees, but because of the committee structure, we could not overcome that. But I personally have not heard from any Democrats from any of those committees. Lynn Westmoreland, we'll have to leave it there. We invite you back to update us on the work of that select committee uh, on Benghazi, and we thank you for your input today on America's Forum. Yeah, just think for the public thank you, here. They gotta, and John. Thank, thank you, John. you very much, Congressman. The public needs to see another piece of information like the Ben Rhodes email to c come out of this, or people might be scratching their heads why, why we do it. It's uh, something we'll keep an eye on, and we're coming right back.